on a new airplane, the performance is associated with an acceleration stop with maximum brake energy, are demonstrated by a full-scale test. It also validates the reliability of the braking system in an extreme situation. When an airplane is heavy and at high speed, the brake's efficiency is usually torque limited, which means limited by the maximum pressure on the discs. There is almost no slippage of the wheels. At a lower weight, a too high pressure on the discs would block the wheels. The optimum tuning of the anti-skid is such that it allows a slight slippage of the wheels on the ground. The maximum energy of the brakes is qualified on a test bench. However, this simple tool does not allow the precise computation of the acceleration stop distances. There are many factors that are difficult to take into account. As an example, the permanent drag variation during the maneuver is not easy to estimate. Tire deformation depends on the loads on the gear and affects the energy taken by the brakes. Stop. These loads vary permanently during an acceleration stop as the weight is partly compensated by some lift. These are the reasons for the full-scale demonstration. For this test, the wear of all the brakes must be above 90%. It is performed at the maximum takeoff weight and the speed to begin braking is chosen such as to get at least 100% of the approved energy in the brakes. The test starts by a three statute miles minimum taxi, including three stops. It is representative of operations with a rather long taxi before takeoff. Usually, after this taxi, the brake temperatures on a wide body are already well above 100 degrees Celsius. The acceleration is performed with the maximum thrust as the aircraft is heavy. At the planned speed, simultaneously, all engines are set to idle and maximum braking is engaged without extension of the thrust reversers. Full braking is maintained until the airplane stops. After a full stop of several seconds, when all parameters are recorded and with the clearance of the engineers, the runway is slowly vacated to reach a secure area, trying to minimize the additional braking. This is a test procedure to avoid closing the runway. As required by the regulations, during the five minutes following the full stop on the runway, there should not be an exterior intervention. It represents the maximum time it takes for the firefighters to reach the airplane. During this period, the tires deflate thanks to their fuses. On each tire, several fuses are triggered by the increasing temperature of the wheel. They avoid the wheel exploding. It is not unusual to have some fire on the brakes. As long as it is limited, with short and transient flames not rising significantly above the wheels, it is considered as acceptable and no intervention is needed. But in case of important fire, the intervention of the firefighters must be immediate. After these five minutes, the firefighters start cooling down by spraying water on all gears and wheels. It may take over an hour for the brakes to reach a low temperature. Braking is performed either with the auto brake in RTO mode, rejected takeoff position, or with full pedals deflection by a pilot. The determination of the stop speed, which puts exactly the maximum energy in the brakes, 
is a critical issue. If the speed is slightly too low, the maximum energy is not demonstrated and the certification target is not achieved. If too high, the risk is to put too much energy in the brakes and to fail the test with fire or deteriorations. The computation of this stop speed is complex. It takes into account the residual thrust at idle during the deceleration and the drag of the airplane. The maximum energy is a function of the ground speed and therefore the wind component also needs to be considered. It is generally recommended that the pilot use the airspeed indication as a target to trigger the braking because the ground speed displayed suffers from computation delays. Specific tools are now available on Airbus test aircraft in order to give the pilot an accurate, instantaneous target ground speed to activate the braking. There is obviously some scatter in the energy put in the different brakes during this test. Therefore, the manufacturers incorporate some margin above the maximum energy in the design of the brakes. This is checked during the test preparation. Usually this test is performed just before certification, as there is a potential risk of damaging the aircraft and it would not be available for further tests. If this maximum energy is not needed for initial operations, for certification, a high energy braking test may be carried out with a lower energy than the maximum. It greatly reduces the risks, but it leads to some limitations for takeoff and landing. The maximum energy test is performed later on. For large aircraft, this test is performed on a very long runway, such as Istre Air Base, with 5,000 meters available. For example, around 4,000 meters were necessary for the acceleration and braking phase of the A380. But the exact distance is not known before the maneuver. Therefore, it is necessary to add a safety margin. This test is very expensive, as it destroys tires, wheels and brakes. In addition, many people are involved, firefighters, engineers, mechanics, etc. This test is performed on new aircraft or to validate new brakes. It is usually not necessary for derivatives if the braking system is not modified. <laughs>